hairs, uh, your hairs are in my food, they're <laughs> in, in my hair, they're everywhere. I'll, 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 I have plenty of mouth. <laughs> Welcome back to Life Lessons in Film. Today, we'll be making sense of life through Moneyball. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful movie, and yeah. I'm super emotional about it. Mm -hmm. It's okay. You go it's for okay. It. <laughs> I remember the general thing of, you know, the Oakland Athletics are in a total slump, uh, don't have a high budget, and they're, they're desperate. You know, they're falling apart in terms of their franchise. And so the general manager, Brad Pitt's character, tries something radical. And uh, after going to a meeting to make some deals, some trades, picks up a guy that is doing a whole new way of putting teams together, which is based on statistic averages and economics and all this kind of stuff, not based on are they attractive, will people follow them around because they have a crush on this player or because they have a attractive partner, all this kind of stuff. They just look at, you know, can yeah. they get on base? Can they, can you... Squish, squeeze out some some wins, you know. And the ever everyone's put, everyone is pushing back yeah. against the change, against the evolution of a way of looking at uh, the game. The coach still wants to continue doing it the whole way. The reason I'm really sad, <laughs> still you're gonna make me cry more. The reason I'm upset is I always get super sad about when people that are that don't have the resources fight for their lives despite all of the odds been being placed against them. I always feel so sad when they don't succeed in the way that they want to. Right. This guy, you know, he finds Jonah Hill's character, whose name is... <laughs> uh, it's Jonah Hill. They managed to get this team, which the entire country doesn't believe in anymore. They are literally... Bottom, bottom of the league. Yeah, bottom of the laughing stock yeah. of the baseball league. Yeah. And he believes in, in them so much. He believes in the team so much. He used to, he was a baseball ball player himself. And he, later he talks about how he, one time, he be, in the past let himself be influenced by money mm -hmm. and promised himself that he would never do that again. So there's a lot of, I would say, skin in the game for him yeah. emotionally. Yeah. Despite the fact that he finds Jonah Hill's character and they make an uh, a success out of this mm -hmm. new way of doing things they still and they obviously get 20 wins in a row and that is amazing mm -hmm. record you know world record um yeah. and that's a huge accomplishment absolutely fantastic incredible yeah. without the resource without the financial resources because it, you know baseball there's a lot of money in there yeah. and it just spoke to the realities of a lot of teams in general mm -hmm. that are, are under resources yeah. under resourced or people in general from different walks of life that are under-resourced and have to, you know, hustle and, you know, work around the system. And um, eventually the Red Sox, which does try to get Brad Spitt character to, you know, um, to, to hire him. He doesn't yeah. want to. They're offering a lot of money, but he still doesn't want to because of that connection that he has to baseball. It's not about the money. Yeah. And it's about the love for the team. Mm -hmm. And he put so much work into this team yeah. And he believes in it so much and he wants to see it succeed. Yeah. And and so he sticks around. Yeah. And that is absolutely noble. It says in the end of the credit, they yeah. talk about how he's still working yeah. with the Oakland days and they still haven't won. And it made me so sad because, you know, this is apparently based on a true story. And it, it made me sad because of just that reality of you can really only go so far if yeah. you are if you come from a certain position, position in life. Yeah. If you're talking about people in society, then then if you're poor, you can only really go so far. If you're talking about teams, if you're an under resource, you can only go so far. No matter how much heart you have, yeah. no matter how much how much time you put in, how that plays a part in someone's self esteem, confidence, how they see themselves, so, right? Yeah. You can try a whole new way of looking at things and approaching life, or or a job, or any kind of method or technique. But again, if you're still given just the, the bare, like nothing, right? If you, if you start from the bottom, they might be winning 20 games in a row and then they still lose. Like it'll affect people in ways that they don't, intangible, right? They don't even understand because, you know, they're like, but you know, we're, we're, we're doing something that no one else has ever done, but simply there's other forces at work that yeah. will still keep people only able to really achieve so much. Yeah. I think. And then that's that level of confusion and stuff that's out of your control 
can really impact people in ways, again, that they, they don't even understand. If you have the money and you're already finding team players that yeah. already are old, privileged themselves, yeah. already coming from a, yeah. a more comfortable position yeah. Yeah. versus if you are the open A's, you already under-resourced, but then you have yeah. people that don't have confidence in yeah. themselves. This and is, it, And then you question yourselves more. Like you the question great, yourselves more. The and, great pet at the end where Jonah yeah. Hill's like, I just want to show you something. And he shows a, a clip of a guy that gets a home run, but because yeah. he's a guy that no one ever expected him himself, also he never expected expect that, that he could himself. ever get a home run, yeah. that he's that good a hitter, that yeah. he just assumes, I can't even try and get to second base because I'm just not the person that can do yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. that's that's the thing, right? You, It's that complex that you have that mm -hmm. it's so internalized mm -hmm. that even when you do succeed, you don't even realize it. You can't even notice it. You don't even look out for mm -hmm. the possibility of success. This guy yeah. didn't even look to see, oh wait, did I hit, maybe I hit over a home run, I'm not gonna run. He yeah. just automatically, because of this internalized sense yeah. of inferiority, yeah. he just decided that, oh, of course, I definitely yeah. didn't hit over a home Does, run and he's running. Can't and, even see, because you know you hit the, the ball and you can generally get an idea of like, oh, I wonder, you know, that's, but because he's someone that just, he, it's like it disappeared. It's like he just assumes, okay, I hit it and I'm going to go to first. Yeah. He's so blind to the idea of even seeing, maybe that I got a home run because it's not even in his mind that that could yeah. even be a possibility. Exactly. There's no hope. It's like you no have hope. been beaten down so much by life, by yeah. people that you don't even have, you can't even compute yeah. that there is a sliver of, yeah. of possibility yeah. that you could maybe even, yeah come out on if that top. was something you're capable if that's, of. Yeah. yeah. I feel conflicted here because, you know, it's one of those things where you're like, okay, this guy worked really hard. The way of the world is that if you were him, like Brad Pitt's character in that movie, you started out with this small team, the Red Sox wants you, that means you are winning yeah. in life. You, right. you go and play for the Red Sox, you right. know? Right. And so I guess I was conflicted and probably it's just one of those things, me being conditioned as well. I guess this part of the conditioning mm -hmm in the world, right? There are these levels and the Red Sox is another level, right? Mm -hmm. Hierarchical, yeah. you'd think. And so that's where you say, okay, well, if he'd gone there, he would have won for sure because yeah. he's already applied this yeah. thing and he probably could have taken Jonah mm -hmm. Hill's character along and right. it would have been fantastic. Yeah. And so- They could celebrate together. Look, they no, can celebrate now together. people recognize it clearly. Yeah. You know, we, we changed the game. We did what we were hoping yeah. to do. Yeah. But again, when I think about it, right? Like I would like, there's part of me that's that feels like, oh, that would have been great. But at the same time, would it have been really great? Because yeah. of that, of the way that this guy sees this, this mm -hmm. is family to yeah. him, this, the yeah. Oakland A's. Yeah. It's like it's leaving. The, it's like the, the symbol. Of, it represents yeah. more than just, yeah. you know, he's, there's that loyalty that you can't. And, and, you know, it, it also kind of feels like it's a baseball version of, say, an artist who is committed to their work and then, a, you know, a big company wants to buy it up and then it changes exactly, it. Exactly. And completely. it's not theirs anymore. And it happens and all the happens time. It happens all the time. And, yeah. and so for him to basically make that decision of, no, that, again, this isn't really what I, I, that drives me. Yeah. You know. The thing that I know for, for sure is that I definitely feel like he made the right decision because he says if he had gone with the Red Sox, he wouldn't have really changed this, the game mm -hmm. you, it, ultimately because as much as the Red Sox adopts this new way of this new yeah. method, it's still within the context of the yeah. system yeah. of it's just kind of co-opting. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're co -op that's basically the Red Sox appropriates this thing. Yeah. They can do that because they yeah. have money. And so for it, this new method to truly be a success, it would be... The underdog. Yeah. If if the underdog yeah. actually succeeded, exactly. that would be that would be the success to the game. Yeah. But with the Red Sox taking over and having yeah. that much money, because he even says the Red Sox talks about it. He's mm -hmm. like, well, you know, when you have money, the great thing about baseball yeah. is that the rules don't matter if you have money. Yeah. And that's the reality of life. Yeah. The great thing about life for people who have money is that yeah. the rules don't matter if you if you don't have money. Yeah. I mean, if you have money, yeah. the rules don't matter. You can do whatever the heck you want. Yeah. But but like Jonah Hill points out, as he says, the fact that you had to get the big teams to consider your method, that's yeah, a win too. That's a win too. Yeah. And it really is. It really is such a win. And I think I definitely am sad that the way <laughs> that I guess I'm also testament yeah. to the fact that the way that the world works is that it's really hard for people to see those little things as wins. Yeah. Yeah. Because the the things that we do see as wins, you know, the more publicized wins, mm -hmm. we start to forget about the little things in our lives that are successes. Yeah. We don't even see them because we're always driving and pushing for that bigger thing. That's right. That is the much the one that's more valorized. Yeah.
but every single day you have a little win but you don't even notice it and so every time you feel unfulfilled because you're like I'm still pushing for that one big goal yeah. and I think obviously the fact that I'm sad might be testament to that I don't know no, no I think it's it's relatable in a lot of ways it's, it's you know it's remember to uh, notice the other wins the little successes the the growths in your life yeah. beyond just this thing that you feel will be the thing that finally does it for you and it might not I mean, I, I like the part too where, and this is why the character is the one that is willing to actually try a different thing because he was a player. No other, or very few other general, the managers of teams were first players. So he looks at it from a player's perspective and he comes as a player that was expected to be the great, one of the greats Yeah, and, what and completely did. dropped the ball, no yeah. pun intended, pun intended, um, <laughs> pun intended, when he actually got to the big league. So he knows that scouts could be, you know, are fallible. He's like, yeah. you don't know. You you make all these promises to these young exactly. kids saying, you know, you're going to be big. And he said, people did that to me. And yeah. by all accounts on paper, I should have even been. And yet you just can't know when it comes down to it. You yeah. Know? Wow. The commodification of human beings. Yeah. That's is... a big part of that movie. Out, it's outstanding. Yep. Uh, how <laughs> yep. I was just remembering how, the news anchors were interviewing oh, yeah. the players, the Oakland A players, yeah. all of them. Just treating them again like they're not even people. Yeah, asking yeah. questions that were just, yeah. I don't even know. Well, for them, again, when they are that dehumanized, and it shows you that, you know, people, uh, like, dehumanization is still happening. If anything, Everywhere. it's worse than it's yeah. maybe ever been in some ways. But the, the, the news anchors casters that probably they maybe they even start off and maybe they eventually get conditioned by their job where they're like you just have to you know you, they start off maybe trying to be nice to them and like I, I don't want to put it in that way that seems it's going to hurt their feelings and then you know they get to the point where they just say well this is what people want to know looking at the numbers the yeah. people also don't see the players as people so they they want to know the hard questions they say like how does it feel? Like, are you worried about that you're kind of, uh, you know, you're, you, you, you're, you're, you're damaged. You're yeah. damaged goods now. How do you feel about that? Yeah. You know? And, yeah. Um, yeah. Because at the end of the day, you're thinking as a, as a news anchor, you're thinking, well, there's got, there are 10 other people that are going to be interviewing yeah. you. What is it about my yeah. interview that's going to stand out? Exactly. I'm going to ask the juicy, gossipy questions exactly. that's going to draw people in. Yeah. So then I'm going to ask you about your personal life and you getting drunk and yep. you going to Las Vegas exactly. and partying like crazy. Do you think you're capable? Yeah. And aren't you a loser right now? Exactly. Yeah. My they, gosh. They don't maybe see. It's not even. And they, they, they don't have time. Also, they're giving little snippets and back to you. So they don't have time to actually get into why are you going to Las Vegas so much? Are you actually happy or is this actually, do you find now that your life is in, in such turmoil that, you know, you have to spend all this time going to Vegas just to. You know, because yeah. you're actually feeling very numb inside. Maybe all this traveling has disconnected you from, you know, it could yeah. be all kinds of stuff. There's no humanity in, in that. I guess it's also game. really interesting because when you think about when you go to watch a game, right? Mm -hmm. You have no clue what it is that these people that are, you're yeah. watching, entertaining you, yeah. what kind of crap they just come out of exactly. before they went in. Because this yeah. was before the game. Before yeah. the game, you're getting asked all these personal, yeah. invasive questions. Yeah. Extremely. Oh, yeah inappropriate questions yep. about your personal life that may that really knock you down yep. just before you go to play, to play uh, yep. and, and play which is another reason and why that's... some team that's out of the ball in the barrel they're getting all these demoralizing questions yeah. from people that are dehumanizing them whereas if you're the top yeah. team in the league we they're just, just gonna be like we just it's all like, praise yeah. and it's all so you're gonna get another home run this so they're already coming yeah. out of the gate feeling a lot better about exactly. themselves which plays a big part which in plays the a big results. part yeah because i mean i can't believe it i i couldn't I don't even know if I would be able. I I always I th this is why I struggle to watch sports, right? Never mind playing sport. Yeah. I w I struggle because of things like that. I yeah. struggle to watch people lose, to see people lose. Yeah. That makes me so sad. Yeah. <laughs> you know, not just the yeah. team, but like people who yeah. are fans. Yeah. 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 I think if you're maybe if you're too empathic, it's tough. I think with sports, yeah. just, you feel for random fans in the bleachers. Exactly. Like, oh, yeah. I you don't know, all like those people. That. Yeah. Philip Seymour Hoffman's character. My God, what a nightmare. Yeah. This guy is flogging a dead horse, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Because Brad Pitt's character comes in with this new method and he refuses. He's like, I want to be able to. He already says, I'm, he's already projecting that yeah. my, when my contract ends, yeah. I'm moving on. Yeah. And he's like, I want to play in a way that I'm going to be able to ex explain in yeah. interviews next year. Exactly. And he refuses for a long time to keep yeah. losing because he refuses to, to apply this new method. Yeah. And I, in my mind, I'm like, what is this? Yeah. What kind of person continues yeah. 
to use it's it's insanity right einstein yeah. Yeah. to do the same thing yeah. over and over again and expect different results yeah. is insanity he yeah. keeps doing that yeah. i think it just challenges his ego okay. too much he wants to believe that he knows what he's doing and when you have you know and it always sucks to get like you know when when he has to take orders so there's that thing of like ah now he's trying to shake things up you know what, what's this guy think he's doing i've been coaching for how long you know these are my boys i'm actually down here with them in the dugout, you know, coaching them. And this guy, he doesn't even stay for the games, you know. Yeah. So you get that. You're not even connected to what's going on. So how dare you tell me what I'm supposed to be doing? So there's a bit of understandable. That's understandable. But then there's also just that ego of you're trying to do something new. And he just doesn't want to change from how things have always been. Exactly. And I mean, a lot of the people there were that way. Mm. I've been doing this for 27 years. Don't you think yeah. I know? Yeah. And I'm like, you've been doing it for 27 years and you've been losing for 27 exactly. years. Doesn't that tell you exactly. something? And that's something I think that the Red Sox guy talks about. Mm -hmm. People who don't, there are going to be some teams who refuse to and change. Be... Despite the fact that yeah. you guys won 20 games yeah. in a row, yeah. they saw you win yeah. with yeah. this new method. And yeah. yet they will continue yeah. to forge on with the old. Yeah. Two years later, it was only the Red because Sox that were using that method. Exactly, yeah. yeah. I put a hair somewhere and then I lost it. Oh, honey, it's okay. Let's record and finish, please. <laughs> <laughs> Here's, uh, your hairs are in my food. They're in, in my hair. They're everywhere. I'll, 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 I have plenty of them. <laughs> looking at people as objects and, and yeah. not as right because yeah. yeah players it's not just about how good are you at playing the game it's mm -hmm. also you have to be, be a handsome guy yeah. you have to be with married to a beautiful girl yeah. sell the dream right yeah, you can't exactly. sell the dream you if gotta, you look dodgepodge exactly yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> it's not even that the player itself has to be good looking they also have to be with an attractive looking partner because yeah. then you've got people that are going to be looking at them together or whatever because there's so many eyes on them and then on top of that you also have to be good looking yourself you have to be with good looking partners and friends whatever and then you also have to act normal right yeah, there's that picture that was very too, yeah. good but he just threw too weird yeah. for people so you can and, yeah. yeah and 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 he was throwing sidearm which is an allowable thing but it was very it was almost under sidearm it was almost like under throwing or under pitching underhand which is just too different for people what they're used yeah. to but it's working but it's just you know, yeah. it just looks too. Or the guy that kind of waddles when he runs. And then yeah. people just don't want to see things that there's a certain aesthetic that people are used to. And they want to see that reproduced over and over again. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> so crazy. It's literally like when you go to buy produce. And if the yep. banana has, um, if it's like a twin banana, oh no, we can't sell twin mm -hmm. bananas. People are going to be freaked out by the yeah. twin banana. Or maybe the banana looks really weird yeah. or it has a face yeah. on it. You know, <laughs> you, yep. that's a defect. It's a bit of a lump or that's something. A bit of a lump. You yeah. can't sell that. That's yeah. literally what they're doing, yeah. isn't yeah. it? So much food is thrown out because of that. Exactly. Yeah. So, many so, many people. Good people. so many people yeah. are thrown out because of yeah. exactly the same thing. So many actors, I'm sure, that yeah. would be great. They don't because they're like, no, you got to look so much, you know, exactly. more symmetrical. You got to look yeah. more. Yeah. If your um, beauty spot was above the eye that yeah. would be yeah but it's on smack dab in the middle of your nose yeah. we just we just can't so yeah i don't know what, yeah there's some things yeah. about moneyball and if you guys have seen it if you haven't and this sounds like a good sell check it out yeah, yeah. if you and hopefully at this point if you like our taste you know give it a shot yeah yeah but yeah, yeah let us know uh, about any of that stuff down below yeah all right that's a wrap